I wanted to show you um, a little model that I've made for coming up with a, an alternative um, energy source. So obviously moving away from coal uh, power stations and gas power stations, we know that we've got solar energy, uh, which is only really good for 50% of the time. You know, it's no good at night time. Uh, and that leaves us with wind. And when when the wind blows, terrific, we can add to the, uh, to the grid. But when the wind stops, we don't have any power. So without the backup of a power station like a coal power station or a gas power station when the wind stops and it's not sunny we run out of power but here in Victoria and South Australia and Perth and Tasmania we are on the edge of the of the southern ocean and there is a huge amount of energy that comes in the form of waves that travels right around the world and in, in fact but it hits our shores and I want to show you an alternative mechanism of storing that wave energy. We know how much energy our homes consume. We already have infrastructure in place in terms of power lines and getting power to our homes. We've got high voltage lines that are fed by transformers from power stations. And in this particular instance, what I want to demonstrate is this alternative method of using compressed air to drive a turbine um, that then produces electricity. And it's going to be used in conjunction with uh, solar and wind power. And effectively what happens is that the, the, the wind blows across the ocean, it creates waves. I want to take those waves um, and really just use the difference between the height of the wave and the, and the trough of the wave to drive these pistons up and down and the pistons just go simply just go up and down and they suck air in and they compress it and then that air gets stored deep in the ocean and this could be anywhere between 100 meters and a, I don't know what the, what the suitable depth is but maybe a thousand meters I don't know where we then start to store um, compressed air and vast quantities of compressed air currently what we do with uh, with dams, hydro dams, is we, we have this special wheel. And this wheel's designed in a way that when the water hits it, it spins it around very efficiently. And this wheel is used to drive a turbine. Here's a slightly different um, design, but similar concept where the water hits these blades and it actually changes the direction and forces the direction of the water out in, in the opposite direction. And that's what drives the turbines. And on a smaller scale, this is what it would look like. You've got the, in that round cylinder next to it is, is, is the generator. And you've got water coming into this, into this uh, contained unit driving those, those wheels. And that is how essentially we get our power from uh, hydro dams at the moment. What we do need in this system here is a new form of turbine. So this is a wheel that's designed to be driven by compressed air as a mechanism of, of taking air in and, then, and allowing the air to escape. Connected to this turbine is, of course, the generator. We're very familiar uh, with building um, storage vessels for compressed gases. Uh, if you've got a barbecue at home, you've probably got a gas bottle next to it. It's, it's designed to uh, be able to, to compress a gas inside that bottle. Um, but this is expensive. It uses a lot of uh, a lot of steel, which produces you know manufacturing of steel and the and the mining of the steel. Uh, that's all not so great for the uh, for the environment. So what I wanted to do is come up with a system that actually just uses the pressure of being underwater, under the oceans, to to store our our compressed air. We need a big high pressure pipe that feeds down into the ocean. In my mind, I would imagine this is just going to be a high density polyethylene and they can be joined in, into kilometers and kilometers and kilometers of, of pipeline. Connecting to this main pipeline are these piston pumps. These piston pumps have a number of different designs where they can be fixed uh, to the seafloor, um, they can be designed in a way to allow for tides, they can be designed in a way to allow for various wave heights. But effectively what they're doing is they are utilizing the difference between the height of a wave, the bottom of a wave, and buoyancy, the difference between um, the
the density of water and air in order to drive drive these boys up and down and in their downstroke they suck air in and their upstroke they compress air down into that into that pipeline they also designed to be connected to the seabed uh, at great depths further away from the shore where we don't really want to see them per se the design also allows for um, for different height tides as well now instead of using concrete as a as mechanism of of anchorage now in order to make concrete you need to to create cement the creation of cement and the burning of lime is really really destructive uh, to our environment whereas at the bottom of the ocean we have a huge amount of material which we can easily um, suck up and spit out into into a bag like container and we can use the sea, the sand from the seafloor as our means of um, of anchorage and we can put pumps down below where we don't have to be you know putting so much energy into sucking sand all the way up to a barge and then lowering the, the bags down down to the bottom of the uh, of the sea floor now this high pressure pipe then feeds down and down and down into the depths of the ocean and it's at that point where we um, where we now start to talk about storage the deeper we go, the, the more compression that we have. And, uh, and there are already existing different mechanisms of, of stored energy. One is this balloon style of, uh, of bag. And another one is really just uh, a concrete shell. It's an upturned, hollowed out concrete shell with holes in the side, allows seawater in and that seawater is then pressurizing the water that is the air that is trapped inside of it. The piston pumps will just continually pump air into those, into those storage reserves until the air reaches the holes and then it'll bubble out. And if you have enough of those, of those um, concrete tanks in reserve, you can really start to build up this form of stored energy. That's the, that's the all important part. Here you can see the, the piston pump sitting at the top of the wave and at the bottom of the wave. You can see them connected to the sea floor and how they're connected to the main to the main pipe. Now this is just one small section of a big farm of these. Now they could be mounted directly on, on big poles uh, like here, which would then sort of indicate that it's going to be mounted in somewhat shallow water unless those poles are going to be really, really long. If we get too close to the shoreline, we know that the waves change shape and we know that the waves then start to break and they, they, they become quite destructive. The, the, the power that's released would be destructive on, on this kind of system. So further out into the ocean, hundreds of meters away from the shoreline, we can then anchor the, the system. We can design a system that allows for varying types of swell, size and also uh, t tidal range as well. There are two buoyant components to this. So the piston itself, which is connected to the yellow flotation device, is easily um, moved. It just it really wants to stay on the surface of, of the water. And the other one is, is a much deeper penetrating um, big steel shaft, also filled with air, but also buoyant. And it tends not to go up and down as readily and happily as the yellow piston. And part of the anchoring system is that the yellow piston will be pushing up against the anchor. So looking down at the, at the system, there's a cap. The air comes in from the underside of the cap and you might be able to see a couple of holes on the other side there. All of this is made out of stainless steel except for the buoyancy component. There's a couple of big flat discs there that stop the outer tube from moving up and down as easily and readily as the inner tubes do. There's the, uh, the tensioning device, which I won't go into, and of course those bags, um, which are, the, are part of the anchoring system. 
you can see that the, the piston pump on the right, it just simply just goes up and down, that's it. It just goes up and down, it sucks air in on the downstroke, and then as the wave lifts the buoy up to the top of the wave, it compresses all of the air, and all of that air is then pumped back down into the system, into the main line, and further down the, into the storage containers. And it does this 24-7, it's not, not dependent on um, on you know, a system like solar, for example. Inside the top of the head here, you can see the, um, the inlet valves. Now these are a sprung one-way valve, allows air to move in, but not in the other direction. So there's valves coming into the outer, outer piston, and there's also another series of, of valves into the inner stem there. And so the, so the air is drawn in, it gets compressed back up into the holes down this inner tube gets to the bottom of this inner tube and then is evacuated into the rest of the um, the storage system and of course there's different mechanisms of being able to anchor this thing to the ground so there's a whole complete system of of piston pumps um, deep undersea compressed storage and then eventually what happens is the air under high compression comes up it's connected to a a turbine the turbine is then used to generate to turn the generator the generator creates power it goes through the various grid uh, and then back to our homes and our offices and our workplaces and our industry and we know um we know how much energy is required we that's easy to work out and it's really easy to work out how how much a farm can store and, um, and when the sun sets and there's no available storage from, uh, from batteries, for example, and the wind is not blowing, then we have this, this resource that we can draw upon to, um, to provide power for us. So thanks for listening to my idea on obtaining storable energy from the waves from the oceans that are right next to us here in Australia.